In this next video, we will go over the Pattern Area tool using the MoDOT Design CAD standards. So to get to the tool, I'm going to need to be in my MoDOT CAD Detailing Standards workflow and under the Graphic Scales Patterns and North Arrows when I select it. I'm going to move down to the bottom and any of the patterns down through ADA truncated domes all the way down to swamp we can use. The one thing to note about these patterns, all of them from concrete down to swamp are using the annotation scale, but the ADA truncated domes is being drawn to scale, so they're going to be real tiny on a drawing. So you might not want to use that pattern unless you're actually creating the ADA truncated domes. I'm just going to come out and select the concrete pattern. It's going to load up my pattern area tool. And you'll notice you have the same methods up at the top and the same options under each method. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the element method. And you'll notice since I picked it from the CAD standards, it already has the cell and the pattern concrete loaded for me. And it has the correct scale, row spacing, column, and angle. Of course, I can always go back in and change any of these if I want to, if I needed to deviate from the CAD standards. And then you have the same options down below as the associated boundary, the drop pattern, snappable, true scale, and use element symbology. I'm just going to leave the associated boundary and snappable turned on. And now when I come out to my drawing, I can just left click on my element, left click to accept it. It's going to give me this alert. Do I really want to place this pattern? If I don't want this to show up anymore, I can just fill in this checkbox and hit OK. I'm not going to do the checkbox. I'm just going to hit OK. And it's going to create that pattern for me using the MoDOT CAD standards. I'm going to go ahead and pan over to the next area, which this one's Pattern Area Flood. So now if I come back up to my graphic scales, patterns, and north arrow, maybe this time I'll pick a different pattern. I'll go ahead and pick rock blanket. So now I just need to make sure my pattern area is on flood. And since I use the CAD standard, it's already got everything set up for me. And now all I need to do is go out and enter a point inside the area I want to flood. So if I want to flood this whole area, just left click inside of it. It's going to highlight it, and I'll just left click to accept it, and hit OK. And I have my rock pattern. So that's using the flood method. I'm going to go ahead and do a fit view, and then zoom into this block down here. I think this one's pattern area flood again. So I'll come back up to my graphic scales and north arrow. I'll just go ahead and pick concrete again, since this is a cross section. I'm going to pan this over a little bit so I can see it all. Go back to concrete. Now this time maybe I want to use my use dynamic area so I can get all these at one time. So it's going to show me the areas I want to flood. I'm going to hold down my control key so I can get multiple areas at one time. I'll left click on that one. Left click on the slab. Left click on all the girders. And then left click on the other barrier curb. If that's what I want, I'll just left click one more time out of a blank area. It's going to give me my warning message. I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to flood that area. So that's just another way you can use the flood method. I'm going to go ahead and pan over a little bit. And this one's for pattern area points. So I'll come back up. So I'll come back up to my graphic scales, patterns, and north arrow. This time I'll pick a different one. Maybe I'll just pick Swamp at the very bottom. I'm going to turn off my dynamic area. And for my method, I'm going to come over to the next to the last one at the top. And I'm going to pick Points. And for this example, I'm just going to snap to the end of one of these flared end sections. And then I'm just going to click some dynamic points out here. And to finish it, I'm just going to snap back to the other end of that element. You can see I'm not quite done yet. I can just do a right click to reset my tool. Of course, it's going to give me my alert. I'll just hit OK. And it's going to flood those points. 
I don't know if you'll ever need to use this option, but that's how you could place a pattern using points. I'm going to do one more fit view, come back down to this linear pattern area, and zoom into that one. So in our CAD standards, we don't have a pattern that'll open up the linear pattern tool, but that's okay. I can go ahead and select a pattern to use. So maybe I want to use this grass pattern. So I'll left click and select it. But now to get to the linear pattern tool, there are a couple ways I could get to the tool. I could come back up to my workflow and select my drawing workflow. And then under the annotate ribbon in the set of pattern tools, this very last tool, if I select a down arrow, you have the linear pattern tool and the show pattern attributes. I could pick that from here if I wanted. Or if I was back in the Mo.CAD standards and I wanted to quickly get to it, we do have this Mo.CAD miscellaneous pull down. I could select that, come to patterning, and I have the linear pattern tool here as well. So I just left click and select it. It's going to load my linear pattern tool but it's going to keep the pattern I had from the previous tool. So I still have my grass pattern. It's set to the right scale. So now all I have to do is identify the element I want to put that pattern on. So I'm going to come out here and select this complex chain. Left click once to select it. Left click again to accept it. And it's going to place that pattern on that chain. Once you do this, it will remove that chain and replace it with that pattern that you choose. So those are just several different ways you can place a pattern in your drawing and to have the correct attributes using the CAD standards.